Well, everyone, it was bound to happen. Let's go ahead and compare the M1 iMac against the M1 MacBook Pro and essentially see which one is the better option for you. Now, I, in my opinion, it really just comes down to do you need a hard desktop specifically on your desk all the time? You don't plan on traveling or anything, or do you want a little bit more of a portable option? Because in my opinion, that is the massive difference here. They're roughly around the same price. There isn't really a humongous difference, but of course, if you kind of spec them out a little bit higher, that's where the price difference kind of comes. But for the base models, they're roughly around the same price, which is a really interesting thing to see. Again, there's a lot of different things that kind of go along with an iMac. Of course, you have to buy the specific, you know, iMac itself, but you also have to have a keyboard and a mouse or trackpad. However, you know, if you guys, you guys know, with a MacBook, everything is already there for you. You know, the, the keyboard is there, the trackpad is there, the touch bar is there, and that's kind of a, you know, a decent thing to consider as well. Now, if you want to pick up either one of these for the prices that I find on Amazon, links will be down in the description. You can always get them from there and help support the channel at the same time. Now, physically, obviously, there's a massive difference. The M1 MacBooks, you know, specifically the Pro that I have, you know, it has a 13-inch display. The Air also has a 13-inch display, and it's a Retina display. It looks very beautiful. The iMac, on the other hand, has, I think, a better 4.5K display, and that one does look better in my opinion. The, the iMac display is much better, but again, the massive thing to keep in mind is that you can always dock up your MacBook to a better display if you need to. So with my M1 MacBook, I use the LG Ultrafine 5K display, and this is a beautiful panel. I don't see me upgrading from this panel anytime soon. It seems about the same as that 4.5K display from, you know, the iMac side. So you always have that option. But with the M1 iMac, you also have that option as well of docking it up to a different display. And it really is just up to you. You know, you have that option. You obviously have to spend more money to get, you know, a better display. But I mean, I don't know, guys, like the M1 iMac, that display mixed in with the chipset and everything that's inside of it. And the fact that it's an all in one iMac, that is a monster of a package. The fact that the M1 iMac and the M1 MacBook are the same price is really astonishing to me. But there are are differences for sure and the storage thing is one thing that I don't like about either one of these. In my opinion, 256 gigs for the base model of these iMacs and these MacBooks, I'm not a huge fan of. I would not recommend getting that. I would recommend getting as much storage as you can and then kind of seeing how you feel at that point because there are some massive differences with this. Obviously, you're getting the M1 chip inside of it, so you guys know already how that is. On top of that, you're getting the same RAM variants as well. To spec it out a little bit higher, I believe the most specced out iMac is more expensive than the most spec'd out MacBook, so do keep that in mind as well. But regardless, you know, again, it just comes down to portability of the two. Now, I, for one, my workflow always works better when I have, you know, an iMac or a massive display, and I just prefer an iMac because of that. I'm not a fan of the Magic Mouse, but I am a fan of the Magic Trackpad and the Magic Keyboard. They're essentially the same thing on the M1 MacBook, and it's a great little setup. I love having that type of feature set where I can go ahead, shift my trackpad around, shift my keyboard around, and I love having that. Even on my M1 MacBook, I tend to use a Magic Keyboard and a Magic Trackpad, and with my M1 iMac, it's essentially the same exact setup. And on top of this, if you're talking about longevity, you know, to keeping one iMac over the other, keeping one MacBook over the other, these things are essentially almost the same thing internally. You are obviously, from what I've heard, you're getting a better cooling system on the M1 iMac. I'm not 100 too sure. I've not experienced that. The M1 chip does a really good job at not overloading your specific, you know, machine and making it overheat all the time. That is more of an Intel thing. But these MacBooks and these iMacs are essentially going to be lasting the same amount of time. One, this MacBook and the iMac are not going to last, you know, way longer than the other one. They have the same chipset inside of this. And because of that, performance is also almost exactly the same. Now, a big thing is that with the base model iMac, the M1 iMac, you are getting technically one less GPU core than the other iMacs. Now, I think for 99% of people who are watching this, I really don't think it's that big of a deal, and I honestly wouldn't even freak out about it too much. On the MacBook side, you are getting, whichever model you get, you're getting the 8-core you know, CPU and 8-core GPU. So theoretically speaking, if you were to overload both of these machines, you would technically be getting, I think, a faster machine from the M1 MacBook than an M1 iMac. But I'm going to tell you this again, it is like you have to really push this machine to get to that level. If you're doing a lot of heavy intensive things that need the GPU, then obviously the M1 MacBook Pro 
base model may be better for you, but in that case, I would recommend specking up your base M1 iMac because your M1 iMac, if you spec it up to the highest, and your M1 MacBook Pro, if you spec it up to the highest, are essentially going to be almost the same performance. You know, there are going to be a couple of differences, you know, because the M1 iMac has a higher resolution display, this could mean that it has more pixels to push, so it may be a little bit slower, but that's still, that's gonna happen. Even if you have a 5K, you know, display like I do, put, insert it into my MacBook, you know, you're gonna experience the same things regardless. So I would not recommend buying one of these over the other because of the performance. It's you're really not gonna get that big of a performance jump here. However, I will tell you, you. One of the biggest annoyance, it's not really a big annoyance, but something that does still a little bit bother me here and there is that the M1 MacBook Pros, as you guys know, they only have two USB-C ports for all of them. You know, the M1 iMac, the base model that I have also only has two USB ports, but you can spec that out to at least having four, which I think is a really cool thing. And that's an awesome option. They don't have SD cards, either one of these, which is annoying. But the fact that you have, you know, four on the top tier M1 iMac, I think that's a really cool thing. And I'm a huge fan of that. The more ports, the better. The M1 MacBook Pro fortunately doesn't have that here, which again, I'm not a huge fan of, but the M1 iMac does have that if you spec it up, which I'm really happy about. So those are really the main differences that I can think of. You know, if you're talking about, you know, which one I would rather prefer, I would rather have the M1 iMac. If they were to be specced out the highest, I would rather have an M1 iMac, but I also need a MacBook when I travel. And you're really not getting that crazy of a difference from one over the other. It kind of used to be the case, but again, this is a really good, like the M1 iMac is a really good improvement from the previous M1 iMac. But when it comes down to the the M1 MacBook Pro and the M1, you know, iMac in this specific case, I would probably recommend picking up whichever one you prefer in terms of portability. That is all it comes down to. And here's a couple more use cases like I mentioned. Do you plan on traveling? Do you plan on going places? Are you a college student or a student in general? Do you need to go ahead and take your MacBook or take a device with you to your classes? And even if you're like right now, like, oh no, I can just bring an iPad or I can just bring everything with me and then leave my iMac at home and I don't really need a computer or whatever. I'm gonna tell you, you know, even if you just get the M1 iMac, you can buy like a $200 display that's like USB Thunderbolt, you know, enabled. Even if you don't buy a display, you can still use the app MacBook and the iMac and you're essentially getting almost the same features. You know, you're getting studio quality mics apparently from both of them. You're getting the M1 chipset, almost the same performance. Like everything is almost roughly around the same. I, again, would not buy one over the other, but my workflow, I would rather be using an iMac than a MacBook Pro to be honest. But I'm just so, like the MacBook is just already docked to a display. It's almost like I'm using an iMac every single day. So that's essentially it. I think the best bang for your dollar is probably the iMac. That display in and of itself is a humongous asset. You know, it's one of its biggest features. You know, that display is a very good display and it's very thin. I don't know if that's a feature or not, but you have that capability. But the screen is a very good screen, better than my MacBook, I would probably assume. But again, if you already have a display, if you already have like a 4K or 5K display, you know, you already have a Thunderbolt feature on it, like you might want to just go ahead and get a MacBook. It may be the better option for you, but I think in my opinion, the iMac is a better deal. But the MacBook is better for the portable cases, and especially if you already have the peripherals, like a wireless keyboard, wireless mouse, and a, you know, a display, that might be the better option in my opinion. So that essentially covers it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my other channels. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.